It is time for another review-esque video where we focus a bit more on a new weapon coming out this summer. I didn't have time to check it out last beta, which is the Soul Reaper Axe. Test servers arrived once again though. I've spent a good amount of time testing the Soul Reaper Axe to see where the potential lies and get a better understanding. And with that, I do have some good news about this item and also some disappointing news too. A lot of you guys probably want to know my opinion about the new prayers getting scrapped as well. So I'll talk a bit about that after as it was a huge part of the potential rewards pool and then give you a quick summary of the other rewards. If you are a fan of these videos where I go in depth on updates and items, give me that like and consider subscribing please for more cool videos. So this axe has a unique ability on top of its good stats. But before we try to explain its unique abilities and go mathematical, let us satisfy our more casual and busy viewers. We will cover the basics first. This axe, the Soul Reaper Axe, is two-handed and requires 80 attack and strength to wield. You can either get it from other players, GE, or farm it yourself by completing Desert Treasure 2 Grandmaster quests and killing the four new bosses coming out from that quest. Each boss will drop one of the four components to make this axe. Typically, this axe will be an amazing melee training weapon. And that also means for Slayer as well, if you want to train Slayer with melee. This axe is overall the strongest melee weapon in the game. I am not really exaggerating that. In situations where it's layback, such as killing basic monsters like Blood Vills or Greater Demons, due to its sheer attack power, and modest attack speed this weapon has really good potential for pvp as well due to its insanely high auto max hits and accuracy i'm no pvp expert but even with very cheap gear you can hit anywhere from 50 to 70s with the auto attack alone it can be very deadly combined with the granite mall instant special attacks for example this weapon's biggest letdown however will be in the bossing department Bosses where you need to swap weapons or bosses where you're forced to go out of combat during transition phases will severely limit this weapon's potential, as its special ability which gives it a lot of power has a weakness related to those. Now we can cover how this weapon works to explain this weakness further. So this weapon's base stats are already really nice, it's got a solid 134 slash and 66 crush accuracy, and a whopping 121 strength bonus. This weapon is a 5 take meaning 3 second attack speed like a rune crossbow, so not too slow and not too fast. So it's a decent melee weapon no matter what, just not exceptionally good until you utilize that special ability like I said. So the Soul Reaper Axe has a unique ability called Mighty Stack that comes with its own unique special attack bar. As long as you wield this weapon, the Mighty Stacks will continue to accumulate every time you attack with it until it reaches 5 consecutive hits, meaning 5 total stacks. Each stack gives the weapon an extra 6% damage, so by the 5th stack, meaning the final stack, it can reach a bonus 30% extra damage. So you're basically going from like 50s to like 70s and even 80s on task. However, each stack takes away 8 hit points, so you lose about 40 HP loss total. Now, once it hits 5 stacks, you will keep the damage boost as long as you are in constant combat and you do not swap this weapon. If you swap it, however, it will lose its charges and you need to redo the whole process in order to gain that 30% back. Also, you will gain 40 hit points back if you use the special attack bar and wait for the next hit. It does have to attack with the special attack bar. This special attack will be 30% more accurate as well and you get your HP back and you will lose all your stacks though. If you use the special with less stacks, then the bonus accuracy and damage will reflect that. For example, 3 stack special attack means 18% bonus accuracy. And if you swap the weapon before using up the charges, then you don't get your HP back. So that will suck if you don't plan accordingly in PVM or PvP, because you've essentially lost 2 sharks worth of HP. So yeah, it's got some drawbacks. First, swapping weapons makes this axe a lot weaker. And secondly, you lose hit points building stacks. So it's very inconvenient for various bossing situations. With max stats and cheap gear, I was able to hit 70s with 5 stacks. 
On Slayer Task, I was able to hit mid 80s with best in slot gear and five stacks. And it's really easy to maintain, like I said, in a very laid back situation. So let's break up some use cases for three different major categories so it's a bit easier to understand because me trying to explain how the Axis Special Attack works is really complicated, I'm sure, for a lot of you guys. You're going to have to replay what I've explained many, many times. But the three major categories that I'll break down is regular mobs, bosses, and PvP. Or where you'll use the Soul Reaper Axe. Again, in situations where you're not swapping weapons, this axe will be really good. Especially for most mobs and Slayer tasks. No other melee weapon will match this weapon's raw DPS output against easy mobs. The only melee weapon that can easily beat the axe is going to be the Scythe of Vitzer, but it has to be on a large creature like a Greater Demon. And it's also real expensive to use the Scythe to kill regular mobs, so almost nobody will ever do that. I will list some mobs that the Soul Reaper Axe will absolutely be arguably best in slot with melee. Discounting again Charge Scythe and respective niche weapons designed to kill certain creatures like Dragon Hunter Lance for Dragons, those will still be the king at those. This won't cover everything, but will give you guys a better idea. Most of these will be available for Slayer tasks. For Demons, Arc Light is probably a bit better over Axe, but again, it's the same issue with using a Scythe. It's caused a lot of charges to use, so it's not really worth it typically to kill Demons, regular Demons with the Arc Light. So the Axe is more ideal as it doesn't cause charges. Also, you'll be on that Slash style for all these mobs. So here's a list of Soul Reaper Axe BIS melee uses. You got Aberrant Spectres, Abyssal Demons, Ankus, Black Demons, Blood Vells, Dagonauts, Dark Beasts, Dust Devils, Elves, Fire Giants, Gargoyles, Greater Demons, Hellhounds, Calphites, Nacrowls, Zygomites, Smoke Devils, Spiritual Creatures, 2000 years later, Suquas, Trolls, Tazars. Yeah, that's all uh, quite a lot, and many others, probably. Now onto the next category, bosses. I'm pretty sure this axe won't be best in slot at any bosses because there's so many better weapons that will cover different bosses much better. And they also have less annoying drawbacks to use, but I will list some bosses where this axe will be at least good or worth using if you have nothing better. So here's some Soul Reaper axe bossing uses that are not best in slot but still good. First one is Soracnus on Crush Style, Hellfight Queen Phase 1 on Crush, General Garage Door on Slash, Krill Susaroth on Slash, Nightmare for Sani on Crush, Abyssal Sire on Slash, Cerberus on, I believe, Crush? It probably depends on if you have like Bandles or Inquisitor, maybe Slash if you're not using like Inquisitor. Ohm Hand at Chamber Xerix on Slash, and Theater of Blood on Slash. Note though for Dieter Blood Race 2, it's mostly effective on specifically Maiden, Dark Beast, Sarpus, and Verzik. It's going to be bad at Blow and Nilo because Nilo forces you to switch weapons, meaning you'll reset your stacks constantly and you won't have time to build up. And Dark Beast will often transition out of combat every 33% or so, so that means you lose your stacks. Even cheaper weapons like Whip will easily beat it at those two bosses but everything else at theater of blood it's pretty solid as for pvp the third section i can only tell you that has a lot of potential especially with a granite mall combo because for example if you just do an auto 60 or 70 and then you just use your granite mall two attacks that could easily stack someone out for 100 hp and even if they safe up you know that's an easy ko I highly recommend asking your favorite PvPers on how to maximize the Soul Reaper Axe for PvP. I'm sure you'll get some better, interesting answers. Now let's talk about Ruinous Prayers getting scrapped. So Jagex wrote a lengthy response on the homepage talking about why they had to scrap it. For the most part, I agree with what they said. They basically said to my knowledge that the Ruinous Prayers felt like power creep for the sake of power creep. Meaning, rather than bring out new prayers to fill certain niches that the old ones didn't, this new prayer effectively was just an upgrade to the existing prayer and did not fill any niches. Especially the latest version, they effectively got rid of the side effects and made them easier to use and overall stronger than the old prayers. So it was like not a niche situation, you were just gonna flat out use this new prayer if you had it. The only downside would be like learning bosses with the new prayer, because that's really the only time that there would be really any downsides. And I guess this new prayer would have probably broken PvP though. 
Just because, yeah, they had some insane stuff like 50% extra recoil damage per. So, yeah, that doesn't sound like it makes sense for PvP. So, again, I agree overall with Jagex. We already have this new axe and new best assault rings. And also for this armor, that would be best in slot in certain situations. And also the scepter attachments. I think Desert Treasure 2 is already super rewarding even without the new prayers. I think it's fine for Jagex to propose a bit more than what we really need for an update. This gives Jagex breathing room to polish what really stands out to the community after feedback. And they can scrap the excess stuff like the new prayers that didn't you know, seem to hit right. This is a good example of that strategy working out. Also, I'm sure new prayers will come out from somewhere else in the distant future. Whether it's going to be the one scrapped or something completely new, we will see. This was a good learning experience though for them, and will probably serve to make better content in the future involving new prayers. So Jagex made some last minute revisions on some of the new stuff, so I will talk about it. So for the rings, almost everything is the same minus the warrior ring upgrade. Instead of getting the 12 slash 4 strength, you're going to get 20 slash instead. I'm not really sure how impactful this is going to be in terms of like maybe using the new ring over like the B ring upgrade. I doubt it, to be honest, but it should be really good for art light specking and corp though. That I do know, but otherwise the rings are the same. Just straight up tear ups from the DK springs. You still need the rings, the old rings to upgrade to the new rings with the drop from the boss. But once you make the new ring, they are tradable. You just can't wear it, I believe, unless you complete the quest. Also, the Virtus armor changed a bit as well. You will no longer get the enhanced effect on your ancient spells with the first armor, but Virtus still keeps that 4% magic damage with ancient magics per piece, up to 12% total. And also, even if you use regular spells now, the Virtus set will now have a 1% overall magic bonus per piece so three percent total magic bonus so you can use that with any spell which is nice but it still makes it second best in slot overall behind ancestral because ancestral's got two percent magic each so it's going to be amazing for using ancient magics whether for pvm like barraging slayer tasks or for pvp if you enjoyed this video slap that like button also thank you guys for supporting the channel and getting it to a hundred thousand subscribers that's a lot of people and very cool and i appreciate you guys for that anyways see ya